Hello and welcome once again to The Point. We're so glad that you could join us today. Hi boys and girls. Now I have a question for you today, but you're going to have to put on your thinking caps because of the COVID, the virus, we haven't been able to do what I'm going to ask you about for a little while. You know, we often have people over to our houses. We invite friends or relatives and we might invite them for a meal or just to come for a visit. When we used to do that before the virus, what did you do to get ready for people to come? What did you do, Jacob and Shane? How about you, Kyla or Claire? Gideon, what do you do around the house if someone's coming to visit? We have to clean up everything. Uh, yes, we have to clean up everything. You clean up your room and help sometimes with other cleaning. Maybe some of you help get the meal ready as well. There's lots of things to do, but you know, sometimes when we've got so many things to do, we, we get so involved in that, that we sometimes even miss out on the party. We're still busy doing things even when our guests come. You know, that's what happened in our true Bible story today. It's found in Luke chapter 10 in the Bible. And we're going to hear about two sisters, Mary and Martha. Mary. Hi, my name is Martha. I live in the town of Bethany with my brother Lazarus and my sister Mary. We're a really fortunate family because, you know, when Jesus comes to our town, he stays at our house. There's always a lot of work to do because, you know, he doesn't come alone. He brings his disciples with him, you know, John and James and Peter and Matthew, all 12 of them most of the time. And so there's lots to get done all the time. Now, everybody in the town knows that I'm a pretty good hostess. My grilled fish are just perfect. A little olive oil and some herbs. Mmm. And my grilled lamb, well, it just melts in your mouth. And then my fig cakes, well, every time I make them, someone asks for the recipe, so you know they have to be good. We're so honored that Jesus comes to stay with us. Think of it. The Messiah we've waited for all these years chooses our house to rest in. When he's here, he fills the house with love. Every word that he speaks seems to go straight to my soul. I understand things that I never thought I could, and yet there are so many things I don't understand. I want to stay close and catch everything Jesus says. Missing a single word would be like dropping a jewel and letting it roll into the mud. I wish I could explain what a privilege it is to sit and listen to the Son of God. I wish I could share this experience with you. It seems every time Jesus comes, there are more and more people that come with him because he's getting better known. And you can't blame people for wanting to come. I mean, he's a great teacher. People want to listen to him and they want to see him. And some of them want to be healed by him as well. Now, fortunately, sometimes my neighbors help with some of the things. They'll invite people to stay overnight if they've come from out of town or they'll bring food. And I'm really glad that they're willing to help when, when Jesus and his friends all come because I sure don't get much help with my sister. That sister Mary of mine, every time Jesus comes, she just seems to go into a daze. She just sits at his feet and as if there was nothing else in the whole world to ever do. Jesus is here again. I'm so glad. But I've had the strangest feeling lately that he's not going to be with us much longer. There's a sadness about him today, as if he's struggling with what's ahead. I don't understand why he would struggle. After all, he's the son of God. He can do anything. But he knows that something is about to happen. Something that will be difficult for him. I'm sure of it. I can just see the sadness in his eyes. I'm glad he's come to us. He can find some peace and quiet here among his closest friends. I'll stay right here, close beside him. Who knows when we'll get to see him again. I just about had it. I think I've had enough. There's all these people to feed, and of course it's the Lord himself to feed and you want it to be good. And what does my sister do? My sister Mary just sits there. She just sits and does nothing. 
I'm worn to a frazzle organizing the food that the neighbors have brought. I'm grateful for it, but I still have to organize it. I have mats to get for the people to sleep on. I've got to get the good dishes out for the meal. And you know, I got up as soon as it was light and started cleaning the house. And I just barely got it all finished when Jesus and his disciples arrived. And somebody's got to go to the market and buy fruit. And there's bread to bake. You think little Miss Mary could at least light the fire to, to bake the bread. But no, as soon as Jesus comes, she just sits there as if she's the queen of the scene. I think I've had enough. I'm going to have to say something. So Martha went over and she spoke to Jesus and she said, don't you care that my sisters left me to do all the work? Tell her to help me. And this is what Jesus answered. Martha, Martha, you are worried about many things, but really only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen and it will not be taken away from her. No. No. So, why do you think that Jesus said that Mary had or that Mary had chosen the better part, that she had done the better thing? Now I want you to pause and discuss that with those that you're with. I'm sure you came up with lots of good answers there. I think you realize that it's important that we spend time with Jesus like Mary did. And our verse today talks about that. And our verse today, as you can see, says, but put God's kingdom first and do what he wants you to do. And that's what Mary did. She put God's kingdom first because she sat and listened to Jesus before she did the cleaning and before she prepared the meals. All of those things are important, but putting Jesus first should be our priority. Now, maybe you don't have to do a lot of cleaning or a lot of cooking yet, but there are other things that we can get busy doing as boys and girls and not put Jesus first. Maybe it's playing a video game, or maybe it's watching a TV show, Maybe it's just playing with our friends. But let's try for this week and ongoing as well to think of the ways in which we can put Jesus first. Maybe before we go to school next week or do our online learning, that we stop and we think and we maybe talk to Jesus in prayer. Ask him to help us with our day or to be with our friends and with our family. Maybe when we come home from school, instead of playing right away, we could spend some time reading a Bible story and learning more about him. It's not bad to do any of those other things, but it's important to put Jesus first. So let's pray and ask Jesus how to help us do that in this coming week. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love for us. We pray that you would help each one of us, boys and girls and moms and dads and grandma and grandpas, to think about the importance of making you a priority, putting you first in our lives before we do a lot of other things. So give us good ideas and direct us and remind us this week of how to do that. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And just before we go, boys and girls, Gideon wants to remind you of the things we need to still remember because of the virus. What's one of them, Gideon? Um, chicken wings, sneeze, washing your hands, singing, Jesus loves me. And, and staying six, six apart away from people. That's right, two meters or six feet apart so we can all stay well and healthy. Okay, we hope you have a great week, boys and girls, moms and dads, grandma and grandpas, and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.